Hello and welcome to Stockton Junction. Today's video is about changing a speaker on on an, uh, a Hornby TTS chip. Um, main reason for me changing it, the Hornby TTS isn't the best sound, but it's reasonable, it's okay. And at the moment, I would have left it if it had fitted. I fitted this TTS and into this class 33 body shell for the Helgen. Um, I am aware that it's a class 31 TTS sound chip and I know that's not the right sound for that loco but it's going to do for now until later on when I'm able to purchase a more expensive chip which is going to be over about £100 so at the moment that's what's what I bought and put in there when I bought the loco it's going to stay for now um, but the problem I do have is that this sits too high at even at its lowest point where it will fit in the body so the body shell will not sit flush onto the chassis so I needed to reduce the speaker size so I bought went onto eBay used uh, road and rails site on ebay and bought myself one of these iphone speakers you can see it's very very thin i mean compared to the hornby it is tiny and these are meant to be better sound than that as well so we will have a little see and hopefully it will be all right i've already pre-wired soldered two wires onto the tabs there because i'm sure anyone watching this already knows how to solder, so I don't need to explain how to wire that part up. Um, I'll just show you the loco for now. I might give you a comparison of the difference in sound from now till later. Which isn't too bad, but... Switch that off for now. And what we will do is we will remove the old speaker. And I'll just put my camera here. So I should remove that from the tracks and place that gently on my board. The first thing we need to do is take the old speaker off. So I may want to reuse this speaker, so I don't want to cut it off too close to the speaker itself, um, just in case I do want to reuse it. So just going to snip that off, leaving a little piece of wire. So if I ever wanted to use that for something, um, it's available. I'm actually looking at putting some sound into areas on my layout in the future, like in the church, etc. So something like that might be an, an ideal little speaker to fit inside a building. So it will get reused at some point. Well, I say when you're cutting these wires, be very careful. They're very, very thin. It's easy to cut straight through and... Um, cut the actual wire as well now normally I would use a wire cutter but because of the thickness of these I usually use wire strippers but what I'm going to do I just literally place the knife on the plastic sleeve just to get a little nick into it very very little and then I can pull off the plastic sleeving Uh, obviously then I'm just going to twist the ends of the wires till they're a nice tight fitting like the ends of those and the one thing I found out about this which um, I did ask about because there was no instructions came with it i literally just got that is what way to wire it up 
because there's no plus or minus on here and the answer I got from them was either way it makes no difference apparently so we shall give that a try and um, the other thing I will do is going to use some of this heat shrink to cover the joins up so we're going to cut ourselves a little piece there of those just lost one across the table so we've got those so what I'll do with those I'm going to just slide those over here for now and then we'll come back to those later on in a minute and I'll just that so it's going to Twist the wires on. And I think at this point, before we decide to solder those wires, I think now would be a good time to just give it a test and make sure that it does work. So I'm going to place that back onto the track. And we'll have a little listen. And there we go. Well, it's definitely a deeper sound to me anyway. Well, it definitely sounds better to my my hearing. I don't know if anyone notices the difference. Obviously, going on a video, it might not quite sound the same. But until that's switched off, if I'll shut down my DCC. We'll just lift that off. So the next job for that is just to solder these two wires up and finish off the installation of, of it. Uh, one thing I always use is one of these um, when you're soldering iron tip if you just push it in like so it gives it a nice clean edge it cleans off all the excess any excess solder etc very useful tool for when soldering Also, try not to keep the heat, the soldering iron on here for more than two or three seconds because the heat will transfer up the wires. It's possible that you could damage the chip. I'm sure that that is a high possibility. Just once you've done it, one thing you'll do, just test that your connections they could do it a tiny bit. It is actually connected, but could do it a little bit more on that one. That's better. Right, so just flatten out these joins so that they are in line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this heat shrink on. And all we do with that is slide it over the part where the solder join is. It's hard to do it while I'm trying to watch the camera. It's going to hold it that end. And all we're looking at doing is rubbing the soldering iron onto that like that. And that will start to melt down not putting too much heat you don't want to melt it completely should have cleaned the tip off before I started doing that
can feel the wires so I can uh, tell if they're going to get too hot up by the chip end which they're not at the moment and there we have it nicely covered I'll just scrape there's a tiny bit of solder that came off the edge of the iron on the outside of there which I can take off that's not a problem it just rubs off and those wires now won't short on anything the only thing I was aware of um, when looking at this is there's metal here and metal here so on this loco there's a printed circuit board there so I've actually covered it with the electrical tape um, always use electrical tape don't use sellotape sellotape it can actually conduct electricity to a minor amount never ever use that for doing jobs that require electricity going through them so I'm just going to place that there so it's not there's some pins on the end here so I don't want to make sure it's away from those and there's no metal sections anywhere else so I'm just going to Put that on there like so that will hold that in place no need to uh take down the other end and to also take the chip in place but because there's a bit sticking up here and there's not much else room to put it i would have put it here if we... otherwise I'm going to need to Place it over that way a little bit, which secure the wires in place as well. And there we have it. I'm hoping now um, the body shell, which should fit all right here, because that's where the chips socket sits anyway, and the other speaker, as you can see, sat an awful lot higher than this one does. And that was just about two or three mil, <coughs> about two or three mil too high to allow the body shell to sit on. The other thing you do want to, <coughs> excuse me, be aware of is when you're putting your body back onto a loco that you're putting a DCC chip in is the fan. If you want, it won't make an awful lot of difference, but if the fan's this end hole and the sound's got to travel through before it comes out if you put it the fan at the end that the speakers in it's always advisable and that's the body back going back on And <coughs> just put it on the main track for a minute. Make sure that's on correctly. And hopefully switch my DCC power back on. Dirty bit of track there as I haven't cleaned my tracks today before the video.
sounds like. I thought so. One of the wheels wasn't quite on. Well, very easy job to do. Um, I hope, obviously, if you have a DC sound, TCC sound loco that you're not sure about how to change the chip on, uh, the, sorry, the chip, the speaker on it, that you'll have a little bit more confidence to have a go now. Uh, it is quite an easy job. And uh, thank you for watching. And goodbye.